we all welcome to this class as you can see today we shall be focusing on the discussion teaching method the discussion teaching method what are we to consider this class in today's presentation by the end of it you should be able to describe what the discussion teaching method is. You should be able to outline the characteristics of the discussion teaching method. You should be able to discuss the relative strengths and weaknesses of the discussion teaching method. In addition, you should be able to outline how the discussion method can be applied in practice as well as discuss tips and strategies that can be used for improving the discussion method as always we will ensure we do not spend more than 15 minutes let's go straight what are the things to consider once again definition characteristics strengths and weaknesses application of this discussion method in practice and of course tips and strategies for improvement let's start with the definition or description of what the discussion method is start with this picture what can you see i see an engaging class Students interacting among themselves with the teacher. That essentially entails what the discussion method is all about. It's a method of teaching that involves the exchange, take note, emphasis on exchange of ideas, exchange of opinions, exchange of information on a topic or an issue. Unlike the lecture method, which we consider in the previous class, which is more like one directional approach, teacher providing all information or in discussion involves exchange of information, opinions, ideas on the topic that is being discussed. So when you use the discussion method, the teacher is ensuring that exchange of ideas and information are involved. Of course, the teacher may pose a question, the teacher may pose a problem, the teacher may then engage the students in an argument, in a debate, so that they can point out, share their experiences, opinions, or knowledge that is what the debate is all about you can see that in the picture some of the students are looking or perhaps debating on whatever the issue could be now let's look at the discussion method in much detail what can the teacher do note the discussion can involve the teacher discussing with the student or the students discussing among themselves. It can be used to activate prior knowledge, explore different perspective, perspectives, rather, clarify doubt or synthesize them. Such a very good way, good method of teaching. Now, what are the characteristics? See, take a look at the picture. What can you see? Teacher talking, student talking, active engagement. Look at the faces of the student. Look at the, 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 the posture. This is, is, is essentially emphasizes what the discussion method is all about. So as we mentioned earlier, one of the important characteristics of the discussion method is exchange of ideas, sharing of ideas, sharing of opinions, sharing of information. It also 
as element of debate and argumentation for and against to provide the topic and the student take a look at it some may not necessarily have right or wrong answer some it's just to make the student to bring out their views their opinions and of course to activate common knowledge and what is it that they have learned before clarifies their doubts it's like during discussion the teacher can use it as a window to knowing what the students have learned and the, 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 the misconceptions that they might have had so they can be corrected and discussion method wow very versatile can be used for a wide range of topics let's move on next let's look at example with respect to teaching chemistry in senior secondary course note that discussion method involves teacher students actively exchanging ideas information knowledge and work of you so in chemistry you can use it for a wide array of topics we just come up with about three of them environmental implications of plastics the student will be engaged with what are the environmental implications of plastic they can debate the pros and cons of alternative materials another topic advantages and disadvantages of reaction mechanisms they can discuss the benefits the drawbacks of various models of representing chemical reactions they can explore the practical implications of different reaction mechanisms Comparing acid-based concepts is another topic. They can debate the similarities and differences between acids and bases. And of course, they can discuss real-world examples to illustrate all these concepts. What about the strength of the discussion method? From what we've seen so far, we really know that it has its own inherent strength. Let's look at this again. Perhaps this is a, there's no doubt this is a chemistry class. We can see the students actively involved. See the interest, see the engagement. That is what the discussion method can do. Active learning can promote active and collaborative learning. Bring your idea, I bring my idea, we discuss it together and we learn more. It can also help in skill development, critical thinking, Communication, argumentative skills. These are vital skills that go beyond even the chemistry content. Can develop interest and curiosity. Can expose the student to diverse viewpoints. And of course, their curiosity will be aroused. Despite this versatility, it has its own inherent weaknesses as well. Weaknesses of the discussion method of teaching. What can you see in this class? Yes, they are actively in here. But then, can you notice that management challenges can be there? Yes, it can be difficult to manage and facilitate a class where you are using this discussion method. Can you see the teacher tries to engage the student, but can you notice that some students are also at the back of him that may not be paying attention? We may also have dominant issues. Dominance issues. The class may be dominated by a few students or even the teacher, excluding others. Perhaps in this particular picture, you see the teacher facing some particular set of students. Maybe these are the ones that are actively participating in the discussion. He then faces them. And of course, those who are quiet, they, 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 they are left at, uh, behind. Then sometimes the discussions can become superficial or deviate from the learning objective. If the teacher is not skilled in such a way that the class can be well guided. And don't let us forget that sometimes some students are shy, they will not want to contribute. And if many of such students are in the class, it will pose a very serious problem. Such ones are likely to be left behind in the discussion or they may delay waste time of the teacher that is trying to engage them 
in the discussion. Despite this, how can we apply it? Knowing fully well that it has its strengths and weaknesses, let's take a look at the scenario discussing the importance of organic and inorganic chemistry. This is three. The objective could be something like want to compare and contrast organic and inorganic compounds in terms of their composition, structure, bonding, properties, and reactions. You can then pose this as discussion questions to students. What can the teacher do if you are doing this in practice? Teacher may decide to divide the class into two groups, one representing organic compounds, the other representing inorganic compounds. Can you see the inherent strength? Yes, the students will be involved in exchange of ideas. So the teacher can give each group a list of characteristics composition, structure, bonding, property, reaction, ask them to research and prepare argument for when their group of compounds is more important or useful than the other. The element of debate now introduce those in support of organic compound, bring out their point, those in support of inorganic compound, bring out their point. The teacher then will moderate this debate between the two groups, where each group represents the argument and respond to the other group's counter arguments. But take note of the inherent weakness. You can waste the time for the student if they are reluctant in discussing. That could make the class not achieving intention. And of course, put in mind the teacher does what he has planned. He can then conclude discussion by highlighting the key points, emphasize that both organic and inorganic compounds are essential for life and chemistry. But helping the student to bring out this point makes the class really active. Putting this in mind then, what are the tips and strategies for improvement? In view of the inherent strength and weaknesses, what can we do to ensure that we improve the use of the discussion method? Make sure that you do not use it exclusively as it were use it as use it in a complementary manner to other methods of teaching be sure that you have adequately prepared provide the background knowledge resources that the student will need make sure that their prior knowledge is activated you also need to be a good facilitator because the student can go off point monitor the discussions ask problem questions Provide feedback to guide the conversation. Sometimes they can give wrong answers, wrong view. There's a need to guide them. Note that the discussion method is also like a way to, 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 to like a window to their thinking to be able to guide them and right. Make sure that you encourage participation from all students so that the, the sum will not dominate the class at the, 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 the disadvantage of others include those who are shy or less confident and make sure that discussions align with the learning objectives that you not go off point and make sure that you avoid superficial irrelevant topics with this in mind we want to say you are done with today's class and we want to really thank you for your attention we will be meeting next when we consider yet another method of teaching. Bye for now.